I want to begin by thanking John Schwenkler and the other organizers of this online conference for organizing it and for inviting me. And I want to thank you all for watching and participating. The paper that I submitted for this conference, Basing and Conjuring, attempts to understand the explanatory relation that epistemologists have traditionally called the basing relation. It's the relation between a belief and the reason for which the believer holds it. I think the same sort of explanatory relation also obtains between an intention and the reason for which the intender holds it, or an action and the reason for which the agent performs it, or an emotion and the reason for which the agent feels it. Be that as it may, it's that explanatory relation that I aim to understand. Now, in recent history, most work on that explanatory relation is focused on solving the problem of the deviant causal chain. But that's not going to be my focus today, because I think that problem has already been solved by Ernie Sosa in his uh, 2015 book, Judgment and Agency, and independently, but in the same way, by John Hyman in his 2015 book, Knowledge, Action, and Will. Both of them solve the problem of the deviant causal chain by appeal to the manifestation of a competence. I think that solution is correct, and I intend for my account of the basing relation to be consistent with their solution. But... Um, although I think they've solved the problem of the deviant causal chain, they haven't yet given a complete account of the basing relation because there's another question about the basing relation that neither Sosa nor Hyman has answered, which is, what's the distinction between proper and improper basing? In other words, why are there examples of basing in which the justifiability, the justifiedness of the basis is transmitted to that which is based on it, the belief or intention or emotion or preference or choice or action that's based on it, and other cases of basing, improper basing, in which the justifiedness of the basis is not so transferred, right? The belief or intention or preference or choice or action that results from the basing relation, the explanatum of the basing relation, is not justified, even though it's based on some basis that is justified. Um, that this is possible is pointed out in a nice paper by John Turi from a few years ago called On the Relation Between Propositional and Doxastic Justification, in which he makes precisely this point. Um, you can get a belief that's based on uh, adequate justification, and yet the belief itself is not justified. It's not doxastically justified because the basing, even though it is basing, the basing itself isn't proper. So the question is, what is it about the basing relation that gives rise to this distinction between proper and improper basing? I give an account of the basing relation that answers this question as follows. On my account, the basing relation is an explanatory relation that obtains in virtue of the agent's de re awareness of that relation obtaining. And that de re awareness is an awareness of the relation under a concept, in particular under the concept of justifying. Now, when you're aware of something under a concept, um, you can be aware of it under a concept that correctly applies to the thing or under a concept that does not correctly apply to the thing. I could be aware of the man in the corner of the room as the man with the martini in his glass, even uh, even if he doesn't have a martini in his glass, right? I'm still aware of the man. I think of him as the man with the martini in his glass, and I can think of him that way and be aware of him whether or not he does have a martini in his glass. It's just that in one case, I'm aware of him under a concept that correctly applies to him. In another case, I'm aware of him under a concept that doesn't correctly apply to him. So, um, the distinction between proper and improper basing is a distinction in the knowledgeability of the application of the concept of justifying. It's a distinction in the knowledgeability of the application of that concept to the explanatory relation in question. The explanatory relation, in order to be an instance of the basing relation, has to be an explanatory relation that obtains in virtue of the agent's de re awareness of it obtaining, but that de re awareness can involve knowledgeable application of the concept of justifying 
or non-knowledgeable application of that concept, maybe even incorrect application of that concept. When the application of the concept is non-knowledgeable, you get improper basing. When it's knowledgeable, you get proper basing. And that's my answer to the question. I hope that the paper provokes you to thoughts of your own on this topic, and in any case, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.